hello and welcome to another incarnate live stream yeah today we're doing heraldry yes this is gonna be fun we'll be doing covering maybe just a just a small bit of history not too much don't want to overdo it and put more focus on designing heraldry but we'll go over pretty much what it's used for um the dare various a little bit of a little bit of history and how to put one together with the tool so i'm super excited about that awesome yeah welcome everybody heraldry sweet i had just a quick quick few announcements by the way uh the first one is hey if you don't know we went ahead and just released a new art the temple pack from the watercolor battle maps just go ahead and have a look here we've got some temple here new stamps new textures awesome check out these beautiful maps absolutely fantastic and this one right here by philip we just added this to youtube go check it out it's a time lapse video it's super awesome check it out after this stream please sweet okay let's keep going all right i also want to add one more announcement and that is i've made an update to the may stream schedule you'll notice on thursday the 5th that's tomorrow we're going to do a little surprise stream how to create temples with the watercolor battle map since we just released that art today it only makes sense to do a live stream on it so i'm excited about that that's super cool so awesome on that hello welcome everybody sweet okay so let's just go touch base a little bit about heraldry now first, heraldry is a discipline or a study of armorial bearings, also known as armory. And a whole new class or a whole new profession came out of uh, how heraldry began. There's no particular individual institution uh, that kind of established heraldry. It occurred over a period of time, somewhere around, I think, around the 12th century, I think. It's hard to remember, or not 12, uh, 1200. So I can't remember exactly the exact date. I just want you to know, as a disclaimer, I am not a historian or a scholar. I don't actually have any kind of professional or formal training. So I am just kind of a layman in this subject. But if you, if any of the users has information about heraldry that I don't mention, feel free to add that in the chat because we love learning here. I love learning new things. And I'm always glad to uh, see what people have to say and what they've learned about it. So a whole new profession came was created called the Herald, and the Herald's charge or profession was basically keeping track of armorial bearings, also keeping track of coats of arms, also learned several other subjects like vexillology, um, and learned about symbols and flags and other things like that. So very exciting. And I want to quickly just kind of break down the diagram real quick about heraldry. And there's a, some misunderstandings about the history of it, and there's some contested history about it. Uh, basically, the conventional wisdom for a short while there, or a long while really, was that uh, heraldry came about from possibly trying to, soldiers carrying shields that might determine uh, which one is an enemy combatant and which one isn't. That's highly contested by scholars right now, so it could be used for other purposes. I don't really know the full history. Uh, a lot of it could be used to intimidate, show rank, pedigree, and other such things like that. So as you know, Romans, Greeks, they also had uh, symbols on their shields. Um, so it's not like it's a new practice or it was a new practice. It's been around for a little while, but it really became like a formal institution around eh, 1200. And I believe there is something in England called the College of arms or something like that i forgot but it became so popular and that people were contesting each other about well that's my coat of arms this is your coat of arms that they actually made an official institution and those heralds would be in charge of keeping track of all of the different coats of arms sigils and all that stuff so that's the information that i know i'm sure there's a heck of a lot more and of course i can't know it all and again i don't claim to be an authority on the subject so don't quote me on it okay Let's just go quickly go over the diagram real quick. Now, this is often called an heraldic achievement. It's not to be confused with a coat of arms because a coat of arms is generally the symbol or the icons that's on the shield itself. That's called the coat of arms, and it was often worn literally on a coat, generally by a herald or from uh, the person whose arms it belonged to. Okay, 
So don't confuse the whole thing as a coat of arms. This is actually a heraldic achievement. Now at the top is the crest, the family crest. It's usually found at the very top. Now there's also a crown. Now this is usually worn by royalty. It would not, you would not normally put a crown on top of a lower rank, like a knight or someone from the class called the gentry. You normally would not have a crown there. So it's limited normally for royalty. There's also a helm. Now a helm, it's a, traditionally over time, when helms were added to the shield, which is an escutcheon, that's right below that shield, it's called an escutcheon. Uh, if the visor of the helm was open, it represented royalty. If the visor was closed, it generally represented one of the gentry. There's also a top banner, the top mantle, a shield. Again, that's called a, an escutcheon. There's a shield supporter, which is you have a goat and a, lot, and a dragon right here. Those are meant to support the shield, and there's various kinds of things that uh, you could use for shield supporters. It could be a person, it could be an object like pillars, a trees, a tower, mystical animals, irregular animals. It, it really varies depending. There's also the charges of the shield, and charges are emblems that go into the shield itself. You'll notice that I'm using a form of quartering, and quartering is just the way in which you'd use division lines, and so it's in quarters, as you can tell, but there's various types of division lines that are added to a field or to the escutcheon or shield, and so it really varies, it depends. There's also the bottom mantle and a bottom banner and a motto. Now with the bottom mantle, it's not often that the gentry would have some kind of bottom or top mantle. That's extra decorating, and normally that would be given to maybe royalty, like a king, a queen, or whatever. It doesn't generally get uh, given to someone within the gentry. But you can add that in, and history is just a part of it. Uh, we'll, we won't go too much into making sure that your uh, heraldic achievements aren't perfectly set to history. We want to add a, a fantasy spin to it, and you don't have to add all these details. Really, you can make... Uh, your heraldic achievement as simple as you want it to be, so it doesn't have to be super complex. I also want to mention something about the motto. The motto is basically, you know, a line of that represents the motto of the family, and normally the motto is not added until several several generations later, so that the family can gain some kind of achievements and maybe some kind of notoriety. And I'm, I mean, if you're looking for interesting uh, references for uh, mottos in a fantasy setting. I totally recommend Game of Thrones or A Song of Fire and Ice. Each family within that uh, that fantasy also have their own mottos to their houses, so it's really nice to see if you're looking for some kind of fantasy reference about that. Great suggestion. Now that you know a little bit about the diagram and how to set it up, now you might want to figure out use cases. Like, why on earth would you want to make uh, an a heraldic achievement. What for? What is it exactly is it used for? Well, for instance, if you have a world map and you want to show maybe the capital, you might want to put uh, a heraldic achievement over the capital showing which house whether the royalty or the gentry has uh, administrative control over that city or that region. You can add, if it's a regional map controlled by one monarch or lord or house or family, then you can uh, go ahead and put that right over the map title just to give more reference. Now, when you're putting together your uh, your achievements, your heraldic achievements, it's always nice to know a little bit about the house or the family or the institution because heraldry or heraldic achievements can be given to more than just uh, the gentry or an or a king or a queen or royalty. It can also go to institutions such as a university where you might want to use a book to represent uh, this kind of symbols that you, or the charges that you want to put in your shield. It might also represent a religious institution. They'll also have their own heraldic achievements. Whatever the symbols of that religion are, you can put that into your, your escutcheon with your charges. And there's also uh, municipalities and other such institutions that also use a heraldic achievements. So it's really up to you how you want to go about it. So I'll first create a new map. I'm going to go into uh, Parchment World, and I'm going to show you how to make the most simple, the most simple of heraldic achievements, not much flourishings and decorations. 
and I don't have to add a whole lot of charges. You can simply just have one charge on your shield and that's it. You don't have to add a mantle or anything like that. So the most bare minimum simple that you can create is just a shield and a sigil or the charge and then maybe a banner with the title of the house or knight, the gentry, the king, queen, whatever, or the institution. So first I'll just go ahead and select all so I can select all the styles and I'm going to type in shield. I'm going to go with fantasy world for this first and we'll make a very, very simple heraldic achievement. And this is what most people will probably be using when making their heraldic achievements because it's a lot of work to put together all these pieces, right? So you don't have to make a really complex heraldic achievement with all the different flourishings, a crazy looking mantle, and all this other stuff. You don't really need that. So we'll start with a very simple heraldic achievement first. I'm going to type in shield. I'm going to go to the fantasy world. Again, these shields are referred to as escutcheons. I'm going to go ahead and just use a very simple one. Go in like this. Get it nice and big so you can see it. And so you first pick your shield, right? You pick your escutcheon. From there, now you're probably going to want to pick your symbol or heraldic icon. I believe if you type in heraldic, there should be a couple icons that pop up. Oh, I'm not seeing it there. Let's go with fantasy world. I'm just going to deselect all and just stick with fantasy world for now. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Now, I don't, may not have all the answers for the historical uh, context and the use cases and everything for it, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Always glad to help if I can. Here we are, it's under heraldry. Okay, now from here, you might wanna just pick one symbol that you want to put on top of your shield, and that's it. I'm gonna put it up a layer so that it's on top of it like this, and why don't I give it a little bit more oomph. I'm going to select both, go to advanced settings, go to filters, I'm just gonna saturate them so they're nice and kind of bright. And I'll make this one just slightly brighter so it kind of pops out a little bit more on the shield. And I'm using a gold and a blue because gold and blue kind of go well together. So there's your first step. You've got your shield, you've added your sigil or your charge. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And then from there, you just want a bottom banner to represent where you're going to put the name. So you just put in whatever banner you want. Let's just go with this one. It's already sticking within the gold theme. Just be careful about choosing your colors, what they call tinctures. And at least in uh, the study of heraldry, it's called tinctures at your various colors. I'm going to go ahead and place this down. Now it's really big and I don't really like that. So I can go into my transform and just change the width like this. And you can put it covering over the shield, have it underneath of it, have it on top of it, wherever you want to put your, uh, your banner at. It doesn't have to be this kind of banner. It can be any banner you want. And then type in your text. And you can call it uh, Leodes, whatever. We'll come up with whatever name. And just make the text black. And then you go ahead and just put the text right inside like that and that's a simple that's really the most simplest heraldic achievement that you can make and it's kind of modern looking it doesn't have all the flourishings it's very simple to put together and it's small enough and compact enough to where you can have several on a map without them kind of obstructing much of the map so when you're making these kind of things i like to make them small if i'm going to have a lot of them on the map like let's say i want to put them over every capital within a region i put it right on top of the capital, it's nice and small. Now, if I wanted to make maybe a, use this heraldic icon or heraldic achievement to, to be for my title of my map, then I might want to make it a little bit bigger, put it in the corner somewhere in the ocean. That's where I normally like to put my titles is in the ocean, somewhere away from the landmass. And that way I can add decoration to it, to the map title. And heraldic achievements is just one thing that you can use to put into your title. Oh, good morning, Brittles. Sorry that I missed you there. So that's pretty much the use cases. And this is the simplest one, right? So let's say that we want to add a little bit more. Let's say I want to go take it up a step further. I'll copy and paste and we'll add another one. And I'm just going to add a little bit more to it. We'll just keep adding a little more as we go to make one more complex. And we can also go into different styles as well to kind of cover it. So let's go over into here and look at one of the things that we can add. Now, if you want, you can add a shield support. 
if you want, and that works quite well. And shield supports or the supporters can be anything that you want. They can be like a tower, a symbol. Uh, you could use these towers right here. I'm gonna make it nice and big. And towers is a fairly common uh, shield supporter when it comes to objects, but you can add on animals as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and put two, two of these side by side. I'm gonna flip it like this and then put the next shield, put the next one down. So these are your shield supporters. Okay, so there's that one. And you can even maybe if you want, bring this size down just a bit so that it fits in there. And now you have towers that help to support uh, the shield and they're overlapping the shield a little bit so it looks kind of unique and interesting. Oh yeah, it's always fun, brittles. Oh yeah, it's fun to put things together. That's the beauty of the tools. You can make little composite pieces you know, you can do a lot of different things. So I know that's kind of hard when you look at all this art and putting things together can seem overwhelming, but really just sit down and practice. I like to create a series of maps called Creative Laboratories, where I just go in and I just start making weird things for fun. POIs, maybe a decorative map title, uh, heraldry, whatever things like that. So it's always good to open up your creative flow and to kind of create some things on the side. The way that I kind of view it is Legos, right? You're just putting some pieces together to make a larger compositional piece. And that's what you're doing with maps in general, right? You're taking the art from uh, the tool, from the catalog, and you're piecing these things together to create something else. Now, once we've added in those shield We've added in those shield supporters. We might want to consider adding in just a little bit more. So I'll bring this up here. I'm going to copy and paste. We'll go to the next stage. Now that we've added supports, we might want to consider adding a little bit more. Like maybe we want to add uh, something above. So you can add all kinds of things. So if it's going to be a, if it's going to be a knight from the gentry, maybe you could uh, add in a helmet of sorts. So we could add that in there. Now there are a couple options. You can continue with the same symbols in here. I think it's okay to switch switch styles if you want. We can go to Parchment World, and I believe there should be a helmet. Let me take a look. Let me expand all here real quick. Sometimes it's hard to find what you're looking for. So I'm going to expand everything, and then I can kind of see it. And I do believe there's a helmet in there. And you don't have to add a helmet. You can add whatever item that you want. So that's the beauty of fantasy is that you don't have to stick to a traditional a traditional uh, heraldic achievement. You can add whatever you want. It doesn't matter. That's the beauty of making the style. So we can maybe add this to it and just see what it looks like. And if it doesn't look good, we can move on to something else. It's really as simple as that. Well, I can take this to the background if I want. Maybe I want to change the color of it. I can go to filters, go to hue, maybe give it a bluish color instead boost up the saturation, maybe boost the brightness a little bit, and I'll go ahead and bring it down so you can kind of see it. Personally, I don't think it looks, I don't really care for it, and I actually don't really like to even add a lot of helms to mine, but you can if you want. You can put the helm right there if you want, or add something, add something else from the fantasy world style, because there's tons of icons and things that you can work with. It's up to you. And I think it'd be cool also to request more heraldic kind of art for the various styles because I do think that heraldry is something that a lot of people might be interested in. So I'm going to go back in. We'll go over some of our options here. Now, if you want, let's say that you want it to be, oh, I got a fun idea. Let's make it to where um, there's a city on top because this is the heraldry of a municipality, a particular municipality. So we'll go in and we'll pick maybe a front facing city icon like this. And I'm also going to change uh, maybe the hue, maybe make it blue, though the red does look okay, but let's just try adding in blue to see how it looks. It may not work, but we can try it. Maybe a darker blue, that's kind of a green. Uh, it's about the same. There we go. You can always bring it down if necessary. You can always put a city on top. And I'm going to go ahead and change uh, much of the transform. So I'll change the height to make it nice and tall. And I'll also change the width. And I'll bring it down to hide some of the line work. And now you have kind of a city. I can also go ahead and go to filters and change the brightness, make it a little bit darker. 
So you have a city on top. So this might represent a city. The two towers might represent two towers that uh, maybe guard the gate. So when you're adding your icons, adding your shield supporters, think about what exactly is it? Why are you adding a tower? Is it because they are the lord of a particular castle? Is there an important keep or bastion? These two towers, do they represent something symbolic? Maybe a battle that took place at the two towers. Maybe um, uh, the two towers represent two locations. So it's a, there's a lot of different options that you can choose from. If you want it to begin to be municipality, then we can put a city on the top. And that way it's like, this is what this is. This represents uh, the city. So this is the city right here at the top. The charge on the shield is a kind of a, some kind of bird of prey with a crown on top of it. So maybe this is a, the royal city of whatever, a capital city where a monarch rules. So think about those things when you're adding your uh, your charges and everything else to the shield. Let's go ahead and copy and paste. And we can keep going with it. I might have to rescale it down. These are really big. So I might go in here real quick and scale all these down at once. This way there's room. I'm just gonna go through the different stages of decorating your heraldic achievement. We'll bring it down this way because I want it to fit. So now after you've added a, a crest at the top, which is just a city because it's a municipal, we might want to add more things to it. Up to you if you want to add more things. There's tons more of flourishings and things that you can add. Really up to you. So I'll go back over and I know that I saw some other heraldic icons. Let me go into Fantasy World real quick. I'll turn this off and then go straight to Heraldry. And that way all my heraldic stuff will pop up. Now you can add more icons and things like that. It's up to you. Maybe you want to throw in more stuff. You maybe want to put something behind behind this. Let's say that the you want to add this behind to add in some axes. Maybe you want to put it on the side so you have one axe showing on each side. So you go like this, rotate. There's one axe on that side. Copy, paste, flip it. You got one axe on this side. Oopsie, let's just hide that real quick by mistake. There we go. So you want axes on each side, like this that are popping out. So it's getting more and more decorated as we go. If you don't like the axes, maybe you want to do something different. Maybe you want to uh, have wings or something like that. So let's say you want to do that. Let's go copy, paste. I'll make this nice and big and I'll put it in the background. I'll drop it down like this. So we can kind of show these wings. I'll drop that down even more. Sort of put that in the background and I'll expand my wings by just going to transform tool, change the width so that there's some wings there. And if you don't like that color of gold, you can change it to a different color. So now you've added wings to it. So be creative, be interesting. Try different things to make it more unique. So we've added that. I'm just gonna quickly just save this. Are there any questions so far about uh, putting together uh, these? Please let me know. I mean, this stuff is a lot of fun to make. So just quickly overview, make it as simple as possible for starters, because I think if you're not familiar with putting together heraldic achievements, it's best to start with this method, just start with the shield and your banner and your charge. And if you feel like, well, I want this person to have more interest, more history, more stuff like that, then then feel free to decorate it further. Oh, I got some questions here. I'm not sure if I'm jumping the gun here, but was there a way to make the single color on the shield have multiple sections? Oh, absolutely. So now you're talking about the division lines and division lines are something that you might want to add in. So let's go ahead and go over that bit. So division lines. Now, how would you want to go about doing division lines? And there's a couple ways that I would go about doing division lines. Okay, so we'll start, let's say that we're using this shield. Okay, it's a good start to use this shield because it's already there, right? Now, there are a couple suggestions that I would make about doing this. All right, make it nice and big first because you want 
to have lots of room to work with. Because if you're going to do quartering, if you're going to do division lines, then that means that there's going to be more fields for you to put more charges in. Okay, so you'll have less room to work with. Okay, so let's start with that first. Okay, now what I'd like to do, what I have done in the past, is to simply use the segments of the path tool to create uh, your division lines. Now, normally in history, the division lines are generally very thick. They're not single lines. Division lines are very thick and they usually uh, are meant to separate sections of the shield so you can add more charges on it. Let's go with the most simplest uh, division that I can think of, which is a cross or quartering. And the way that you can go about that, it's not complex. We're just going to take use a path to create uh, our line. So let's do this first. So I usually like to put a line down, make it live. I'm going to try to use the same, relatively same color. So a brownish color works just fine. Let's go over to orange. That way I can get more of that brownish color that I'm looking for. I think that works fine. We're also going to turn off the shadow. We don't need them. And I'm also going to change the width of it. Let's bring the width up. Okay. Lots of questions here, and I'll be sure to get to them all. First, let's start with uh, doing segments, okay? So first, let's just make the first segment. And I'm just going to take this piece and copy and paste it. Let's just zoom in so you can see it. Real quick. Don't worry. We're going to be covering all this stuff. Don't worry. Okay, next we're going to add the next one. We're going to go across. If you hold down that shift key, it will lock at certain angles, so that way it's easier for you. And I'm also, well, that's a little, it's a little low, a little high. Let's go for a little bit further down to add for a little more room in those top quarter sections. There we go. Add in the next one. And that looks a little thin. I kind of want to stick around the same thickness as the other one. Okay. So now that we've done our quartering across. Okay. Very simple. Now, you might want to fill in. Uh, a little bit of the cross section. White is generally a color that I that's very popular to use. You can use yellow. You notice we're using yellow here. So lots of options to choose from. And first we're going to color it in by just using the path tool. We want to make sure that the coloring that we're going to be doing is going to be a layer below the line work that I've created, but also on top of the shield or the escutcheon. Okay, so that way I can do it within the lines. Now when I'm doing this, I like to zoom in close so that I can see it. And then I, again, like to apply a path and then I can change it to where I see fit. I'm gonna change it to, well, I'm gonna increase the width quite a, quite a bit. I'm gonna change the color as well to whatever color that I wanna use. I see yellow already and that's a good color. So let's go ahead and choose that one. Uh, let's see here, let's go with uh, the yellowish color. And eh, let's go a little bit more in the orange. Just a little bit more in the orange to match that color okay and i want to make sure it's set to the right layer it seems to be below and i also want to change the blend mode because i want to catch the artifacts that are uh below i want to catch the artifacts that are uh on the shield you see how i put that yellow there and it picked up the artifacts there i'll go to color and i might even want to make it a little bit brighter Okay, here we go. I think that's okay. Let's just attempt real quick to see how it looks. Yeah, absolutely. I would love a color picker and I totally agree with you on that. 100%. Oh, oh, you know what? I forgot to mention something. Let me uh, mention that real quick. That is when you're, you're working with text, there's a limited size on how big your path uh, can get. So I'm going to scale this down quite a bit because the path size is very limited, it goes to five. But now that I've scaled it down, you'll notice that my path size is a lot bigger, right? Because it's scaled down, and now it's easier to pick things up, okay? So I'll go ahead now and fill this in. It's much larger, so now I don't have to worry about t filling up this huge area. And I'm choosing the uh, color. I think color works. Hue might also work. But I'm gonna do it in a single, pa in a single pass. I'm going to fill in the whole section and I might change my blend mode as well. So let's go over this real quick. Oopsie, I kind of made an error right there. Oopsie. See, that's what happens. Oopsie. 
Okay, I'm not gonna stick too much in the lines, it's okay. I just wanna test the right blend mode. There we go, yes, I do believe color is the right blend mode because it, it won't color over it differently. So let's go ahead and do that. And I might wanna change the blend mode, like I said, to make it a little bit brighter. I'll fill that in. That's not really that bright, so we'll fix that, don't worry. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and select these yellow paths. So I'll just go here into the side, shift, select, alt, select, path. There we go, I think that's all the paths. And we'll go through the various blend modes real quick. Oopsie, that's not the right color I'm looking for. I'm looking for that yellowish, kind of orangish color. There we go. Yep, I kind of stuck out of the lines a little bit. Oopsie. <laughs> okay, let's go through the various ones. I'm trying to remember which one is the right one that generally works. Uh, is it color? Is it hue? I can't remember. Uh, I think color works fine for now. It should be a little bit brighter than that, really. But let me pull on a second. There we go. And normally you wouldn't have normally you wouldn't have uh, the interior. So this square right here in the center. Not normally do you have that. I don't normally see that in heraldry, but you can you can uh, have that if you want. Again, it's fantasy. You can make things up. So this is how you would do your basic quartering. Uh, it doesn't have to be this thick. There's obviously not a lot of room in here, but this is how you would go about quartering. There's different ways of doing divisions. You can create a chevron. Uh, you can put a line, a diagonal line across. You could add several lines going uh, horizontally or vertically. So there's a lot of different variations and divisions of your field on your escutcheon. And of course, uh, once you've added your division lines, you can add in your charges into the shield. Okay, so there are several very several ways you can go about it. Let's say that you want varying things within there. Uh, let's say that you have maybe this icon in here. One second here, I'll put it in. You have one symbol in this here for a charge. Let's say that you have a little bit more simple icons. Uh, the list of charges range. Uh, their charges can be mystical creatures, objects. Uh, they can be constellation of stars. They can be a people, uh, various symbols. So the options really kind of vary about it. Let's go into some various symbols and I'll go ahead and add them into the charge. All right. Okay. Let me just go through the various options here. I know there's some symbols here. We are right here, some symbols here. Now I mentioned constellations, so it's not a bad idea to maybe throw in some stars. And the number varies, so maybe I'll create a triangle or a diamond of different icons. So I might want to put some charges in there. If there's other um, charges that you want to add, like a tree or a compass or maybe a tower, there are all kinds of various choices that you can go with. Let's just maybe add in just a funky symbol. Just for the fun of it, we can add in a symbol right here. Oh, let's go like this. Or you can throw in, uh, well, actually, I already have a symbol on that side, so we we'll, won't go across that. And also, uh, if you want to add different colors, you can. So I'll quickly do that same method with the path tool, and I'll just fill in a section. So if I go to the path tool, and it's the same concept. You're just filling in like this. So if I want this section to be uh, white, let me go ahead and make sure it's set to the right thing here okay oh, that might not be the right color let's change through uh overlay that might be what i'm looking for there we go works a little bit better delete that go down a layer or go down in size just a little bit there we go now i can go in and color in this section white if you want and i look forward to doing getting some more uh updates Take a step back real quick. And let's say you want this one to also be white right here. Let's just take a step back real quick. So if you want multiple colors, you can fill it in. And now you have kind of different colors. Let me just zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see it. There we go. 
Obviously, you're going to want to be a little bit more careful when you're filling in with your line work, but you get the general idea. So again, this is not only, this is just one way to do your division lines. There are also tons of other division lines uh, that you can use. I'll just do one more so you can kind of see the other variations. Go look them up. There's quite a few different division lines. Uh, a lot, there are some that are diagonal. So if you want, let's say that you're trying to add in a diagonal one, I'll take this same path right here. Just maybe just zoom it in a little bit so I can get the size that I want. Let's get the angle that I want. Right, let's go right there, copy, paste it, put another one down, and now you have another form right here. So just a little trying, little going across using that same uh, path. You can go in and just add, fill it in your division line. Oopsie, my mistake. One moment. You want to go in and change your division line. You totally can. So if you want this to be white, oopsie, I forgot. Always remember to zoom, to scale it down a little bit. That way you can fill it in. This is not really what the path tool is really designed for. I know we're naughty, naughty people. <laughs> But, I mean, you can use it for whatever you, you really want. Obviously, the purpose is to create paths for your roads and stuff like that on your world maps. But, I mean, of course, you can, you as a creator can kind of do whatever you want. So, we'll add this on here like this. I'm going to fill it in. And then you have another division line across your field. We're creating new fields. So if you want, you can do that. So then, and of course, you want to change the proper blend mode so that that way it picks up the artifacts of the shield below it. Okay? And remember, there are various types of division lines. Go look them up. Chevrons and uh, crosses for quartering are the most popular and most recognizable that I've seen. Cross is good. So all different kinds of variations. Go look up different kinds and figure out for yourself what you're looking for and don't limit yourself to one shield. If you're doing multiple heraldic achievements to represent capitals uh, on your map, then you might wanna try using different shields. Don't use the same shield type and color for every single one. Maybe change the color and the shield for each one on your map so that that way you have them, right? So again, that's where you would pretty much put this kind of stuff. Also, you can put heraldic achievements uh, in your regional title of your map, right? Because maybe there's one lord or liege or a particular house or family, some kind of pedigree that has administerial control over that region, town, whatever, right? So that's always important to factor in. So really that's as simple as it really gets. Now, if you want, we can ask some more questions, kind of a short stream. We can put together some more heraldic icons if you want. No, no problem with me. And there's various styles. You don't have to use the world style. You can use parchment. So I'll just go ahead and push all these examples. Oopsie, some naughty. We'll go ahead and move all these over to the side. There we go. So now you have some different varying icons. We'll go ahead and throw this one over here and I'll also make this one smaller. And I do look forward to the option when groups can become stamps because heck yeah, super excited about that. So once that happens, then I'll probably make tons of heraldic achievements for everyone to use. Or just make your own. It doesn't matter. I'm always, always glad to share any content that I create with people. Okay, sweet. All right, so we got some nice shields here. All right. Why don't we continue putting just a couple, uh, a little bit of charges in this shield, and then we'll call it good for that, and we'll move on to other ones. So let's go ahead and maybe change uh, the shield. Well, actually, no, we'll add the charges and then we'll go to a different shield and a different style because you can use whichever style you want to make them. I've made heraldic uh, achievements with fantasy battle map pieces. You can do it with uh, fantasy regional. I mean, there's all these different uh, different kind of heraldic achievements that you can make. So it's really cool to experiment and try different things. So I'll throw in maybe uh, a lion crest. I'll put it in here. So there's a lion right here. In this section, we'll go ahead and push that up a layer so the lion is in there. And then maybe we want to throw in maybe another icon in there. So we'll just throw in a rando one, put it in right here like this. Maybe I'll put in a couple, maybe just two of them over here on the side. So very simple, nothing complex, so much more. Oh yeah, that's what makes it so great, right? Antler Panda, I absolutely agree with you. 
Incarnate has so much potential. Obviously, we, we aim for D&D &D maps and all that stuff. Of course, that's our main audience, but we always would love to encourage creativity and do a lot more with the tool than just make maps. Obviously, you can make all kinds of fun things, and we encourage that. We never want to stifle our users' creativity and imagination. If anything, we want to spark it and set it free. Okay, I'll go ahead and save these changes, and we'll move on to the next uh, style to work with. We did world. Why don't we... And we also did uh, a little bit of parchment in the diagram. So why don't we try a different style? We could do fantasy regional. We could do battle maps, whichever one. And we can go maybe make one that's a little bit more complex. We still have lots of time. We we're only 40 minutes into the stream. Mm. Awesome. All right, fun stuff. Let's go. Okay. So we've done fantasy world. So maybe we want to try a different style. Just going to create a little divider line at the bottom and change it to segments and i'm going to change the gap length there we go and i'm just going to put one all the way across the map and i might even refresh the page as well oopsie that didn't work right it's too small go with a little bit bigger there we go i want people to see it oops come on now you can do it oops Hmm. I might have to save and refresh the page because it's just acting weird. Let me go ahead and just refresh the page. It's just acting like a poo. This just happens once in a while. If ever you kind of deal with a lag or anything like that, just me, just be sure to save and refresh the page, okay? It's just one of the downsides of a uh, web-based tool. It is currently a web-based tool because it's just easier to add updates and more art in this way. If we had it a download or ex ex executable, then that means we'd have to change the code every time to fit new stuff and, and whatnot. And that's a lot. It doesn't mean that we can't do it or won't do it. It's just that it's a lot of work and it just works better for our overall model. Let me go ahead and quickly uh, make a little divider line. Go ahead and turn this off. There we go. So I'll hold down shift. Don't forget, hold down shift. I'll press escape. My line is there. And I'll bring it down a little bit. Make it black. There we go. So this is fantasy world. We might want to maybe make some stuff in a different style. So let's go with uh, fantasy regional, perhaps. And now there are no shields for Fantasy Regional, so of course you'll have to either pick one from uh, Fantasy World or from the Parchment World style, uh, whichever one that you want to choose. Uh, just know that if you pick one from the Parchment World style, the shields, they do not have a clipping mask, so you'll have to paint them in by hand. And that generally means that you should first put together the shield or the Put together the heraldic achievement first, put it all together, and then paint it last once you've put it in the right location. So just remember that when you're dealing with uh, the shields from Parchment World, they do not have clipping masks. So they are not going to pick up the color on the FG layer. You'll have to paint them in hand on by hand on whatever layer they're on. So this is on the BG layer. You'll have to paint it. So again, make the composition piece first, then you can paint it later once it's been firmly decided where you want to have it okay because if you paint it where it is then it, the colors are going to stay in that section when you're painting on the layer so again first uh, confirm where it's going to be so that that way you can paint it properly okay so i'll actually put it over here somewhere again make your uh, shield nice and big so you have lots of room to work with and figure out where you want to put things now, you don't have to use uh, this. You could use a different shield, again, from Fantasy World, but I'm just going to use Parchment World because uh, we already used these shields, okay? So I'm going to drop the saturation just to make the line work black. That's step one. Next, I'm going to go ahead into Fantasy Regional HD, and I'm going to pick a couple things. Now, the first step might be that I want to add in maybe some shield supporters. And there's a couple options that you could do. There's statues and there's people. So, and you can add towers. Now we added towers before. 
So let's maybe go with people instead. So if you want, we can go into the humanoids and kind of pick uh, some, some characters that we maybe want to be shield supporters. So we'll go and pick a couple. I think there's some nobility options. So we'll go ahead and pick one first. So let's figure one out here. Let's say, let's have a Lord or a Liege. And now they may not fit to the right size. Now we will be scaling this down. So you're gonna be going over a little bit like this. And we can make it maybe just a little bit smaller. Now I'm gone way over the 500 threshold and that's perfectly okay because once we scale it back down again, uh, it will be at the right size so it will fit better. Let's go ahead and choose another figure for the side and maybe we wanna add like a clergyman or something like that. So we'll add that on there as well. Let's add a person right there. Let's go ahead and figure out another piece. Now you'll notice that there are indeed shadows baked in and that's quite okay because we can always go in and kind of remove those using clipping masks. So I'm gonna have it so the shadows are facing inward. Notice that my shadows are faced inward. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it's possible that I can hide those shadows with clipping masks or a mantle. Okay, so let's go ahead and first line these up. Now, if you want, if it's easier for you to put things together or you have a hard time putting things together, set up the grid and the grid will help you. I like to put it all the way to layer negative five. So that way uh, it's not go going over the art. And I like to drop the opacity down because it is very distracting, but the grid will help you to make sure that things are lined up right. So if I want to put the ankles of these uh, shield supporters on the line right here, that way they're set upright. And I'm also going to line it up to where there's a center line in the shield so that that way I can decide where to put my, my division lines. Now from there, uh, we can put a mantle and there's a lot of different options when it comes to mantles. You can put a hill, you can put a mountain, uh, you can make a little scene if you want. So if we want, we can do that. Let me go ahead and put together some items maybe that might work well. Let's go with a hill. I'll type that in. Okay, this hill might work just fine. Now, the thing with this though, is that you might, unfortunately, it might show up in the shield. I'm gonna place both of these people on top of these hills right here. And don't worry, we're gonna hide we're gonna hide that that hill. I'm gonna rotate the hill a little bit so that that way uh, each person's kind of standing on the hill. There we go, like this. One person there, one person there. Now we're gonna go ahead and check this shield is at one, and this thing is set to negative two. Let's take it down a couple more. There we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the shield with what's called clipping masks. Now this might take a few minutes and I think what we'll end up doing maybe is going back over the art and just adding clipping masks to the shields. So I can add that as a request because I think that makes more sense than having to fill it in clearly with clipping masks. Those shields should have their own clipping masks. Just me personally, I, I feel that way. Okay, let's go up to the right layer. Let's go to negative one. I'm gonna throw in these real quick. So we'll put one here. I'm gonna add another one here. And I'm gonna fill in the entire shield. And again, we'll probably just end up adding adding uh, clipping masks to the shield. It makes the most sense to me personally, instead of having to put them together. I, I don't know why some stamps wouldn't have, have them and some wouldn't. So I'm gonna fill in these spaces. So this way, now whenever I place it, I don't have to paint on whatever layer it's on. It's just stuck on the BG layer or the FG layer, and that's just so much easier. So I'm gonna place these very carefully in each section. And yes, this will be a little time consuming, and I'm sorry to say, but it's it's worth it if you're trying to do something, if you want it, your heraldry to look good. So I'll keep adding more of these, we're almost there. And I'm just rotating them so they fit into the shield. There we go, and then we can, oh, I missed, I see I've got a little spot I missed there, so I'll make sure to get that. Making sure everything lined up right is not easy. And unfortunately, I have to add so many clipping masks to it. 
wish it wasn't the case, but it will be helpful. Wait, let me add that in there. Now I'm gonna take all those clipping masks and just make them into one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just group them and I'll just call them CMs for clipping mask. Group CM. So this is now we have a clipping mask and we've added in a mantle or a some kind of uh, base for our characters to stand on top of. Okay, then I can also go in and paint this whatever color I want. First, let's figure out what other things we might want to add from Fantasy Regional that might work well with this. Okay, let's maybe think about do we want to add division lines? Do we want to just throw in a sigil or a crest? Uh, there are a lot of different options to choose from. So let's go back in. I know there's some mystical creatures, like there's some dragons in here, and you can throw in those if you want. Uh, you can also throw in structures, towers are very similar. You can throw in a statue to be the symbol, a dragon. You can even throw in a compass. Whatever options you want. Let's maybe put down a dragon and just see if we can put it in and see how it looks. It's probably going to be pretty big, being at 500. So I'll scale it way, 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 way down like this. And we can throw in a dragon if you want. You can throw in maybe a dragon and a burning tower to represent that maybe there was a battle that took place. Again, you can put down more clipping masks to hide that shadow. If you want, that's up to you. There's also tons of different variations of dragons that you can choose from. Let's say you want to add in, uh, let's see here, what other options there are? There are these statues here. Ships are very common as well. Let's say that uh, it's a shipping town a or whatever. You can add in those kind of icons. So you can throw in varying ships if you want, make it nice and big so that there's a ship in there. So now you have a nice ship. Uh, and you can throw things on top as well. Again, we put cities, you can put in uh, the towers. There's a lot of different varying options you can choose from. Maybe you want some kind of dragon to be at the top. So lots of different options. Let me just take a look at the options here. Do, do, do. Lots of different options. You take a look. Hard to put together heraldry when you're using a style that is not specifically designed to create heraldry. <laughs> um, uh, let's say that it's a wealthy merchant town and there's uh, lots of grain, wealthy, because it's on a coastline. So maybe there's a lot of money involved. So maybe you want to show a mill. Uh, in Historically speaking, lords, lieges, controlled mills. Uh, that's usually where they forced... Um, the peasants or serfs to grind their millet to grind so that way and they would normally charge the peasants to use it but throwing in a windmill can show that this lord or liege you know controls a mill has control over a mill and there's a lot of money involved in controlling a mill uh, both because uh, the peasants or the serfs will have to go and pay the fee to use it a lot of times uh, serfs would get in a lot of trouble. Knights would go in and destroy any kind of mill uh, that peasants tried to make for themselves because they just didn't want to pay for that. But a little bit of history there. So we'll add that in there. So maybe your lord's a beneficent lord. Maybe the mill is for free use. I don't know of any historical uh, context for that ever. But uh, yeah, that's usually how mills were used. So we added in a mill here. I'm going to hide uh, the, maybe hide the door a little bit. Or maybe not. I want to actually show as much of the uh, the sail that's on the windmill. All right, here we go. So yeah, we've added in that. And there's all these varying things that you could add in. We still want to make a different color for the shield. So let's scale it back down. There we go. We'll scale it down. And maybe we want to consider start changing some things with the shield. Maybe we want to start adding in some color. Maybe some blue would be good. It is a, it is a ship, so maybe blue would be the best choice. Uh, let's go with texture. And of course, you can pick whatever texture you want from any style. Uh, I'll just use one for this style. And when it comes to coloring, I like to turn off the softness. Make sure it's set to FG one key, and then you can just go right over and paint the shield. Now you can do whatever texture that you want. We can select all and then go through the various textures that might work well. Maybe you want a darker blue. Maybe you want uh, some green in the blue. It's up to you. But there's a lot of different options. Normally when you select all styles within uh, the style and pack order, it's going to take a few moments to load. 
So you'll notice there's some options here. I can use this darker color if I want. I can go with a lighter color if I want. Now the shield lines, the shield uh, line work is dark. So it, maybe it's not a bad idea to stick with a lighter color to represent uh, to represent your shield color. And of course, is this historically accurate? No, of course not. This is not, there are no textures or quote unquote colors, tinctures within heraldry, but this is fantasy, right? You can add whatever the heck you want, up to you. I also might want to consider just boosting up uh, a lot of maybe uh, boosting this thing up, making this a little bit brighter so it pops out. Oopsie, not that, my mistake. I'm gonna add this ship right here. I'm gonna boost the brightness so it pops out a little bit more. Maybe boost the saturation. And now you have that. Now you can add other symbols as well to it if you wish. Uh, one thing you can do is mix match styles. When it comes to heraldry, it isn't a bad idea to mix, mix match styles, which we have been doing. Uh, I don't recommend mix matching styles when it maybe it comes to making like a battle map. Now this is not uh, naughty on you if you do do that, but it is difficult to mix and match styles for maps because the styles have different varying line work, shadowing and texturing involved in it and with different depths. And so sometimes mixing stamps from different styles can have a kind of not the best result. So I don't personally recommend that unless you are going to use filters HSBC to force the art to be compatible with each other. And that's kind of a, eh, an advanced technique. Doesn't mean that you can't do it. It's totally up to you. I'll go into, I think Parchment World actually has a, uh, an anchor. So I might go ahead and add that in. So just give me a moment, I'll throw in an anchor. Let's just take a look. I know for a fact we have one in here. Let's see here, boop, boop, boop. where'd you go? Now I know I have an anchor. I'm probably just, just going, walking right by it as I always do. There it is right there, cool. So if you want, you can throw in an anchor, put it at the bottom, you can change the color. We can go over to filters. I'm just gonna drop the saturation, boost the brightness, and then change the contrast. Actually, you don't have to do the saturation. Just bring the brightness all the way up and the contrast all the way down, and you'll get white. Uh, you can change the opacity if you want to make it uh, so it doesn't pop out so much. You can put one in each corner with varying sizes if you want. Maybe you, maybe they have uh, sev it represents several ships. Let's go ahead and flip it that way and put a smaller one a little bit down here. There you go. So if you want, you can add in some anchors and we'll put this into where it's in the center. And I'll push these up a layer so the shadow's not going onto it. So I'll push this up. There we go. And there you have some anchors to represent. And this person maybe has a fleet of merchant ships that work for them. So lots of varying options. And of course, you want to probably put on uh, your banner, of course. So I'll go back to Fantasy Regional HD. I want to stick within as much of that style as possible. And we'll type in a banner. And there should be several options. Here we go. Uh, you know, gold works fairly well. We'll just stick with it. Okay, and you can put the banner underneath and we're gonna use the banner to hide the shadows. So I'll just put it right there and there you go. Now you have a banner that is hiding the, that is hiding the shadows uh, on the ground and that way uh, you're not seeing these shadows wherever you're placing them. So again, you wanna maybe hide the lower mantle so that that way things aren't inconsistent. It's all about just composing the pieces to get the desired result that you want. So I'll go ahead and group this and I'll try to fit it to around the same size as these ones. So this fantasy regional, not too bad. Let's go ahead and just do a quick save. We're at 99 changes. Yay, Lily Rose, I'm glad that you are here. Yeah. All right, we're going to save and we'll maybe make one with fantasy battle maps because fantasy battle maps, again, this is just a Lego concept. You're putting things together to make what you want. So uh, we can maybe try some different things. First, I just stick with a theme. Oh, there's a question here. What's this? What's this? Hi, new user here. If you create a shape with the brush tool, is there a way to select, move it 
unfortunately, there is no way to actually move anything made with the mask tool unless I, oh, you mean with the brush tool. Is there a way to move it? No, you just have to repaint it pretty much. I just make sure I didn't understand or is it just painted on the FG and BG layer? Absolutely it is. Uh, there are no way to make shapes move except for if you want to make land masses out of clipping masts, which you absolutely can, and that way you can move them. Or it would just be a nice feature uh, to actually create uh, movable land masses, which would be super cool. But as a walk around, and I, unfortunately it would be time consuming, you could use um, uh, clipping mass to make your land masses and that way you can just move them but that'd be so incredibly time consuming okay all right let's go in with fantasy battle maps and we'll go ahead and create one more heraldic achievement and we'll use fantasy battle map for those of you lego nerds out there like myself like moi okay now, when it comes to making shields uh, or shapes, I, li I like to use wall wall shapes. So you can actually piece together your walls uh, to kind of make whatever shield icon that you want, whatever style that you want up to you. So I'll go in and maybe just pick, uh, let's go with maybe a crypt wall. And we'll kind of use this for now. Again, you're going to make it kind of big. So that you can work with it and i'm going to transform this as well we're going to change that width like this let's go right about there should be fine and then we'll go in with these shapes let's go i think this shape should be fine right here and i'm going to turn off the shadows as well i don't want any layer shadows of any kind uh at least not yet if you want to add layer shadows in add them in later for now i'm going to just uh pretty much put the piece together We'll make a simple shield. Okay, we'll go with this one. And then I'll just go with something a bit different. Go ahead and add this large piece here. And the beauty of her fantasy heraldry is that you can do whatever you want. Or heraldic achievements. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to follow historical pretext. There's no need for that. Uh, it's just actually more work to try to follow history perfectly. Uh, and for me personally, and this is just my opinion, so I'm not going to diss anyone, but I find that too much realism and historical accuracy when it comes to a lot of things hinders the map process. It's nice to have a base knowledge, uh, and that way it helps you because you should start with utility first and then apply fantasy later. And by utility first, I mean just the function. So if I make the form and the function first, then I can add fantasy elements to it. So that's just my personal opinion. Some people really like history. They follow realism to the T on their map making. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But me personally, when I over-focus too much, just me personally, I over-focus on realism, it ends up actually breaking up and disturbing the process for me. And I don't really care for that. So instead, I'm just gonna start with some basic uh, form and function and then add fantasy elements to it later. Just as a heads up. Okay, so now that I've kind of created my shield, uh, I can go ahead now and maybe just group it and put it together like this. And again, you can fill it in with clipping masks like we did here, or just leave it into the BG layer. Just make sure there are no stamps below it. Okay, so that way it's not showing up. Or again, just add the clipping masks up to you. Now that I've added in that, I might want to consider adding in some other fun things to make it more interesting. Now, with maps they with heraldry there are some kind of interesting uh designs and i think they're called mantle pieces and it's kind of a flourishing design often seen on the coats of arms or the actual coats that the gentry or heralds would wear so a lot of those designs were directly linked with the coat that they would wear with the arms on it the armorial bearings now i do kind of like this lantern design right here and this actually can act as a really nice kind of uh, flourishing design. So I'll go ahead and zoom in like this. And you'll see there's some nice orn ornamentation on there. And that works really great when you're trying to decorate something, whether it's a border, a frame, whatever you want. And so I can place this. Let's go, go down a layer so it's behind it. 
And you can really add some decoration to it. So I've added that first one there. Let's go in real quick. There's some other decorations here that I can choose from. I do believe there's uh, a nice Gothic pack and we'll go ahead and use the, some of the decorations from the Gothic pack to decorate. So we'll go with here, go to Gothic. One second while I pass it 18 times before finding it. <laughs> so we'll go to Gothic Horror. Give it a second to load. Heck yeah, and there's a lot of cool different uh, orn ornate different items in here that you can kind of use uh, to make your to make 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 what you want. Okay, so let's see here. I'm seeing all kinds of fun things. I'm seeing varying hats that you might maybe want to put down. There's some beautiful napkins here that might work great for some decoration. I'm seeing a knight and some shields, a heart. I'm seeing some bones bodies i'm seeing some really interesting designs here on top of on top of this so if you want you could include adding in a design on top if you wanted to so again lots of lots of options let me just remove this and put this down so you can kind of see it so if you wanted to add various items you absolutely can let me go ahead and put this back and i'm going to turn off that shadow i don't need that so if you want more decorations, you can put that on top. There's all different kinds of ones too to, to choose from. So let me delete that one and go through the various ones. It's really up to you what you want to use. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the random, turn all that stuff off. And we'll just go through the various options. And I'll place one here. There's an interesting one right here. If you want to put like a, a body on top like this, if you want it to be something kind of dark fantasy or morbid, you wanted to add maybe some more uh, design to the top like this. You can add a skull to the top to kind of add a nice thing at the top there. So lots of different options to choose from. Really, there's so many different options. Maybe you want to add in, let me see here. I thought I saw some cool stuff that you might want to consider adding in more stuff. One moment. Oop, I like this, uh, this body right here with the dress. That's cool. All right, um, let's try adding in some more. So if you want to add even more details, let's say you want to add it in some, some interesting kind of designs along the side here for your mantle. Again, you're going to add your clipping masks. So you want to add some interesting kind of designs to the base here. Add another one right here. And it's supposed to represent like the kind of tapestry and all the kind of designs that you kind of see. Because uh, sometimes the it's very ornate when you look at it. So and of course you know you're going to want to add in your clipping mask. So I'll type in these right here. I'll punch these and bring them down a couple layers, and then I can go in with my clipping masks and kind of cover up. Let's just verify it's on the right layer, so I don't accidentally uh, cover things up. Let's go down one layer. I'll add it and just see what it looks like real quick. There we go. So we now ahead and add it in. And remember that there are these hard edge clipping masks. Don't use the soft edge clipping masks because uh, they won't, they probably won't work as well. Okay, so let me go up, grab a circle like this and just put it on like that. And now you have uh, your interior covered. And you have these nice kind of little designs here. We can keep adding more stuff to it. Maybe you wanna put this on the top like this. Maybe you wanna add in more things. We'll go back in add more stuff so many different options be creative explore try different things don't be afraid if it doesn't look good keep adding keep going add lots of different details it really really helps uh, there's also some nice uh, gothic robe sets these might also work as kind of uh, drapery that you might want to add up to you i also see that there's some really nice uh, figures right here that you might want to use to represent uh, maybe a crest. It's okay if it's top down, that's all right. The design varies. You doesn't have to be front facing. You can change it. It's really up to you. Let's keep going over our, our options here. I'm gonna scroll down and look. And I think there should be some items in here, some interesting statues, some gargoyles in here. Let's keep going down. I'm seeing some really interesting designs right here. You could use these if you wanted to. Like, let's say I want to put this down back a layer. You'll see some really interesting designs in this one. So I can 
kind of zoom this one up like this. And if I want, I can change whatever settings I want. Maybe I want to make it a little bit brighter and put it like this. I can choose a different one if I want. Maybe I want to use this one instead. And again, just make sure you turn off that object shadow. There you go. So you can add in all kinds of varying options. They're going to give you really unique coats of arms. Just remember that the, the more detail that you add to it and you want to add it to your map and you make it a little tiny little icon where your capital is, I recommend going with a more simpler, a more simple uh, ac or not academic, sorry, heraldic achievement. Uh, if you're going to use it for the title, maybe in the corner next to a title, then yeah, make it big, add the mantle, add in all the, the supports, add in a bunch of fun stuff to make it more interesting. Uh, you can also create a mantle maybe made out of flowers. Let's say that I want to, because the flowers are often used for charges and for designs. So if I want to, I could maybe throw in some flowers. I believe this is nightshade. Maybe the previous Lord was killed by Nightshade or something like that. Just a reminder to the family. Hey, make sure you got those taste testers before you decide to dive into that delicious meat pie, okay? So you could add in flowers and there's all different kinds of flowers in the style. And you know what? The top down, top down flower options are, there's so many. There's roses, there's lilies, there's all kinds of different flowers. So it's really nice to decorate uh, the mantle on the top and the bottom. If you want, you can add in more flowers. Let's say that we want to go with a different one. So I can go ahead and select all, type in flower. Flowers are very often used in heraldry. So let me type in flower real quick and see how many options we have. I'm seeing a couple here. Look at these beautiful blue camellias. If I want, I could add these in. Let's just make them a little bit bigger and just randomly throw in some. There we go. So you have some flowers at the top right here. So that way, if you want, you have some nice flower decorations. You can add vines climbing up. I mean, be creative. Go open up a new map and just put down a ton of shields and then just explore. Try different things. See what you can come up with. It, you really, you'll surprise yourself what you can come up with. I, uh, I do think that there are some maps on the explore page where there are some heraldic achievements on there. Um, it's possible uh, that there might be, uh, again, maybe we could ask the artist to include more heraldic stuff. Though I do think there is actually enough in the, in the packs as is for you to create your own. The limitation is just your own creativity. And again, if you're trying to figure out creativity, just go look at uh, fantasy heraldry from movies, from games. Uh, if you want to go with a more historical charge then maybe go with that so lots of different options uh, i'm going to choose a goose and add in uh, some wings because i do love wings and i'm going to take this goose i'm going to put it at the bottom layer turn off that option and put it all the way in the back so that you have a nice little shield right here and now you have some wings to be included with it so now you have some wings so now your your herald your heraldic achievement it's just getting more and more. It's adding more and more details, getting more and more interesting as you go. So yeah, I like I like the plants. Uh, one thing you can do with, let's say that you really want your flowers to pop out on your heraldic uh, achievement, just select each flower, go to shadow object, first step one. Now, once you've added in the shadow, you're gonna wanna do some shadow adjustments, bring the shadow down, and drop the shadow below. And what this will do is it's gonna use a shadow to make those flowers pop out. You see how now they seem to pop out more? It's because I've added a shadow. But maybe I wanna consider doing the same thing with these nightshades. So I'll just select one, select all from this set and do the exact same thing. I'm going to just change it to zero. I'm going to drop the shadow down. So that, that way you can see that there is some shadows beneath so that way now you've really added some pop they'll really pop out okay so we've made a nice piece of heraldic achievement here so we can throw in something in the center uh, i'm just going to go with a single icon there's so much going on uh, but it's really up to you again 
There's so many different things you can do with heraldry. There are so many different options. Let's go with uh, not using from a different style. We'll stick with battle maps. And so we'll go through some options that we might wanna choose from. And there are some interesting things that we could choose from, like maybe uh, it's a bard college or something like that. So if you want, you can throw in an instrument like this, maybe crossing instruments. So you have maybe one like this. And don't worry, we're not gonna stick with this. I'm just gonna give you some examples. Let's say this is a bard college. And if it's a bard college, then you would expect uh, some, some instruments to be on it. So we'll cross this across like this. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So you can have, and then put it in the background as well. And I'm gonna turn off the shadows. Or you can have them being across to make a V. Oopsie, my mistake. I forgot to take all my clipping masks and group them so that that way I wouldn't accidentally select them. I'm going to also take that group that I just made and I'm going to lock it by just pressing uh, the lock right next to this icon here. So now I won't accidentally select it. Let me turn off the shadows of these real quick. None whatsoever. And instead I'm going to make kind of a V shape like this. Make it a little bit smaller. A lot of different options you can have them crossing over each other. Maybe you want them both to be on the side. Uh, this is all the very different variations you want to go from go through. If you want to make it a uh, a university for uh, maybe a collegiate uh, university, then you can type in book. I'll just give that a moment to pop up, and I believe there are some really nice kind of book options right here. You can take this book, we'll turn it off, make sure that there's none, and then just put a, put a book in the center like this. And let's make sure that those flowers, those flowers are in the foreground. So you'll see that the flower is in front of the book. So that way it's very clear that the flowers are in front. Okay, so remember that overlapping. And then you can add other, uh, options as well if you want to it. Let's go ahead and close it out real quick. Let me go back and we'll paint the color. So let me zoom, let me select the whole thing. I'm going to group it. Oopsie, I just noticed that when I grouped it, those clipping masks didn't work. So we're going to undo the group and we're going to have to change the layer of the clipping mask. It happens. So let's go ahead and select. Make sure this stamp is, oopsie, undo, my mistake. Let's get the right stamp, go up the proper layer. I'm gonna push this one up, oopsie. This is where layering gets kind of interesting. Let's also take this one and push it up. I want it again to be in front of the book. And let me find that path as well. I'm gonna unlock everything so I can select it. One moment, there we go. I'm gonna push this down a layer, there we go. Let's try grouping again, there we go. Okay, now I'm gonna scale it back down. To the proper size. There we go. And we can go with a different color. I think white might work well. So let's just go in and you can either choose a flat white color or pick a texture of your choice that might work. Let me just go in here and we'll go with fancy. Let's go with a different style instead. Let's maybe go with uh, parchment world. And there are these nice kind of textures right here. We'll add to the FG. And just paint it on and now you have your book now if you want more decoration on it you can totally do that i do believe there's all kinds of varying options fantasy battle map actually has some nice wallpapers that might work good let me look real quick there we go right there you'll see some of these nice wallpaper there's a blue one right here carpet texture these carpet textures can work just fine uh, as a texture that you want to use of course you're going to have to resize it and change it so let's just go real quick, go to advanced settings, check the verify the size, and we might want to line up, there we go, like this, and I'll apply it to the FG, and now you have some a nice color carpet in the background. You can also change things up. I want to maybe boost the saturation so it's a little bit brighter. Maybe I want to change the hue and the color to something different. Maybe I want to add green purple. Maybe I want to change the color again. Maybe I want it to be uh, this one and change it to that. Maybe I want to completely desaturate it and remove all the color from it altogether and boost the brightness way up. 
and then apply it again. And then I have that. So think about your options. Personally, I think this one works for me, but you now you have some interesting background texture instead of just a flat or a flat color. So pick and choose wisely what you want to do. It's just a little bit of pre-planning is all you really need, okay? When you're putting together your stuff. And where are we at here? 11.20. Well, we're gonna make just one more heraldic shield. One more, I'm sorry, one more heraldic achievement. And then we will call it good for the day. Don't feel free to ask any questions that you might have. Remember to be extremely uh, creative. Just go onto Pinterest, a Google image search, or whatever browser you choose, uh, image search, and just look up heraldic achievements or her heraldry in general. And you can use that to decide the general layout. Because often what I'll do is I'll just say, well, uh, I like this layout. I like that there's this and then there's that. And then when you add in those things, you're using it as kind of a reference. Let's go ahead and turn off that shadow. I don't want the shadows on any of these items right here. So I'll go ahead and remove that object. None. There we go. Okay. All right. There you go. So we'll make one more. I'm going to go ahead and leave this. Could add all kinds of stuff. There are so many different options that you can choose from. Uh, let's just go with one more. I'll stick with Fantasy Battle Map because I like it. So let's just go ahead and type in here. We'll type in wall. We'll create one more shield, okay? Just one more shield. Okay. And we can do something a bit different here. Uh, let's go with maybe a different color scheme, so many different options. You can even show, uh, use ruined stamps to show a ruined house. The shield has rubble, it's falling apart. It's an ancient house that's waning, its power is waning. So if you want to use a broken stamp, uh, you absolutely can. Uh, that can be extremely useful if you're trying to show an, a, a decrepit, dying house, bereft of any kind of nobility. You could do that, shall we say. So let's go ahead and just use that. I'll just go in and put none. Now you can use any broken stamp that you want. It's up to you. I'm gonna make it a little bit larger again. Uh, and you don't have to go with straight. Uh, you can go with varying options. So if you want, you could have made a, uh, a diagonal like this and create a, let me go ahead and switch this back. Here we go. We're gonna create a, uh, a diamond shape or close to that instead. So I'll delete this one. Probably turn off all these layer shadows. I don't need them. Okay, and we're gonna pick an angle. I'm gonna go with hold down sh uh, the control button to make sure that I stick with certain angles. And again, you're using the uh, the, got the grid as your guide. Get the angles right. Okay, there we have that. Now I'll add in another one. I mean, who doesn't like to have one, one lordly house that's bereft of any kind of nobility? Okay, we'll add that in. Let's go with this one next. There we go, put it on top, like this. And we might even wanna consider uh, boosting those a little bit larger, like this. So we'll go ahead and select these, go with height, transform, make them a little bit taller, like this. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and select these two, copy, paste, and I can put them on top like this or change the angle to make them a little bit shorter. So maybe I want, uh, <laughs> Lord Denethor was the worst. Absolutely, I agree. He was a total butt, wasn't he? What a jerk. Jerk face. What a poo head, huh? Didn't want to let go of his power. Mm. Well, we don't know anything about that now, do we? <laughs> All right, so I'll go ahead and throw in some more broken walls because I want to show, again, kind of a broken house. There we go. Put those together. There we go. Works just fine to me. Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have this kind of broken kind of shield. Now you don't have to have every section be broken. You can just say, uh, you could put all the pieces together that are just normal and then just have one section that's broken. So I kind of uh, chose a broken one, but you can take that same non-broken version. So let me just see if I can find that uh, desert rock wall. I think this is the right one. Let me just verify that's correct. One second, there we go. I don't, nope, don't think that's correct. 
let me go through the various options here. Where is it? Oh, here we go, right here, desert wall. I think this is the proper one. And you can just kind of build this, build it uh, from here again. Just turn off all your layer shadows, of course. There we go. And so you don't have to make uh, to make it to where one section is just one section is broken instead of multiple sections. Okay, we're gonna use this to put the shield together, of course. One second here. We'll add in some other pieces, maybe even a broken section right here. Let's put it on top. Okay, and I'll select to make these a little bit taller. And I also am probably gonna just change all these to be the same uh, because I see that one has a different kind of shading on it and whatnot, so I'll just desaturate the whole thing. And I'll also change the brightness because you notice that there are there's a lot of shadowing in it, and so it does looks a little odd. So I'll change the shadowing just a little bit, or the brightness just a little bit to make it match better. And I'll select these two stamps, and we're going to transform, increase the height. There we go. Up we go. Up we go. Keep going. Keep going. There we go. Ha ha ha! And then from there we can go in and change the angle. like this so that you have a little bit of a shield. And I'm actually gonna flip and rotate this. So I want the rubble part to be, oopsie. <laughs> now don't you do that now. None of you are gonna do that now, are you? <laughs> I don't know if you could, oh, there's a question in here. Oh, I love answering questions. What do we got here? Oh, it's already been answered. Oh, all right. Thank you, Cheryl, by the way, for answering that question. Awesome. So you're representing a broken house there. And if you want to further show that there's ruin or destruction, you can always throw in a fantasy regional stamp of like a ruined building, ruins, a tower, lots of different options. So let's go with fantasy regional and I'll pick maybe a ruined building of some kind. And then maybe that can kind of represent either a, uh, a shield supporter. And frankly, you don't have to uh, have two shield supporters. You can have one shield supporter. You don't have to have multiple. Uh, it's up to you. Remember, it's fantasy. You don't have to stick through uh, any kind of historical uh, relevance or anything like that. You don't have to make it perfectly to history. It's actually a little bit more fun to kind of create your own. So I'll open up Fantasy Regional real quick. And I'm going to choose a ruined building. So let me type in ruin real quick. And I think there might be a couple. So there's these ruined uh, deserts. So you could put this at the base underneath if you wanted to. It's up to you. I think there's also ruined towers as well in the haunted section. So let me switch over to Fantasy Regional. I think there's haunted. One moment while I go over it. Humanoid, Dark Citadel, Eastern Babylonian, Ethereal. Hmm, where is that? Abandoned. There it is right there. Now abandoned is nice because there are some abandoned buildings in there and we're going to use some of those to maybe represent um, a tower on the side. So I'm going to obviously drop the saturation on this one so that that way it sticks within the gray theme and I might want to increase uh, that a little bit. So let's go in here. Let's put this up in the very front like this and what we have now is kind of a ruined tower. And, uh, you know, having one support might work better than having two here because it's a ruined house. And without two supporters, how is, how is the house staying, you know, uh, in, good, in good care, right? So we'll add in that. And we can also uh, rotate it if you want. You say you want the shadow to be inward. You want to hide it. You can put it here too. Flip it again on this side if you prefer it to be on this side. So up to you how you want to go about it. Really, the options are up to you. I don't know which side I like it on better. This side makes more sense because this is where the ruin section is. But if you want, you can put it on that side. It's really up to you. Okay, let's go ahead and put that on this side. I think it's okay because I want to put it on the ruin on that side. And so we have that ruin there. And you can throw in the other ruins at the base if you want. So we'll type in ruin again. And there are some ruins available, which we just saw. Uh, one caveat with the, uh, if you cut out a stamp out of our tool, just make sure that you only use that custom stamp that you use with the original art 
only within Incarnate. Please don't uh, take the stamp, the custom stamp that you made with our art and then put it in another tool. That would technically violate our POI, or, or sorry, our POI, but our TOS. Uh, we don't mind if you uh, change the art and then put it right back in the tool again. That's perfectly fine. We don't have any issue with, with that whatsoever. But if you are going to put it with maybe another map maker or sell those stamps, that would be completely against our TOS. So just kind of keep that in mind. I don't want anyone to get in any trouble, okay? So again, please, uh, if you do change any of the art for custom use, make sure that you use it within the very tool because I don't want anyone to violate our terms of service, okay? All right, so let's quickly add in a little bit more and then we'll call it good. So I'll add in this ruin real quick. Uh, again, I'm going to drop that saturation. Okay. Yeah, as long as you use them within the tool, it's not really that big of a deal uh, for us. We really just don't want uh, you to use it with other other stuff. I mean, I can come, uh, go ahead and talk with, um, with some of the uh, team to try to remember, but I do believe that we are okay uh, with bringing it back in. As long as you're using it within the tool itself, it's probably going to be all right. Okay, so we've added in some ruins here and we might want to consider adding in a lower mantle. So if we just type in a hill, just like we did before, and you can use that same hill stamp if you want. And I'm just going to drop the opacity or not drop the opacity, but change uh, to the color to gray because we'll stick with all gray. Okay, all right. All right, so we'll go ahead and push this in the very background. So it's below everything. Oopsie, and I do want uh, the shield to also be up a layer. So let me delete all this stuff and make sure only the wall is selected. One second. There we go. I'm going to group that. There we go. And now that it's grouped, I can bring it up a layer. Oopsie, did I include? Oh, I did include that as well. My bad. Okay. So unfortunately, I have to uh, take these wall pieces and put them up a layer. Just one moment. There we go. So we'll take them up. There we go. I just want the hill to be on the other side. So I'll put one there. Kind of a large. This is kind of a larger one, as you can see. And it's okay if you have a little bit of a larger one. Okay. There we go, and we can add in uh, maybe another ruin or a tower. Let's go back here and I'll type in abandon real quick. And there should be some smaller abandoned buildings that might work fairly well. This is a small abandoned building right here, and I'll just put it right here on the side, right here, so it's just included. Let me go ahead and push it up and change uh, this real quick, change the saturation and boost the brightness, there we go. So now you kind of have a ruined city scene uh, that works kind of well for, right, let me go out real quick and make sure that I get that tower properly placed where I want it, there we go on top. So now you kind of have a ruined setup. And if you want, we can do all kinds of interesting things for its set to ruin. Let's just go ahead and put it here. You're going to have to hide probably this right here with a clipping mask. I absolutely recommend just using a soft, uh, a soft clipping mat, a soft edge clipping mat. And I'm going to just go ahead and fill this in with a texture instead. Uh, and then just pick a color maybe. Uh, I think gray works well with purple. So maybe I can use this texture right here. In fact, there might even be a ruined texture that maybe I can use. Let me see if there are any. Uh, I think this one will work fine. We'll just add that in there anyway. Set it to BG. I'm going to change the size so that I know how big it is. There we go. And I'm also going to in probably increase, inc increase the saturation and change it maybe to purple, I think. Let's see if I can find a good purple. There we go. And I'll just fill it in with purple like this. Okay, and then I'll just use a skull because it's meant to represent kind of ruin. Let's just go ahead and fill that in. Purple and the gray works just fine together for me. And now I'll just type in a skull and then put that right on there. And I think that will be it.
Let me type in skull. I'm going to search in, I think Fantasy Battle Maps 2.0 has some nice skulls in there. One moment while I put these together. And you can just choose whichever one that you want. I'm just going to put it on right here in the center. Let's say right about there looks good. And if you don't like that one, you can use a larger one. Let's say you want it to take up more space. You can go with this one instead. And I'm also going to turn off uh, the shadow like this. And if you want, you can change this, it to just be flat gray so that that way it kind of matches. So now you have this kind of broken uh, kind of house. Let me go ahead and put that clipping mask real quick on, uh, on there to hide that shadow. That's what clipping masks are generally designed for. It's meant for hiding things that you just don't want uh, to be there. It's really just as simple as that. Okay, so look for that soft edge and not the hard edge, right? And I'm just going to put that hard edge just right on top right there, and you're going to hide that. First, let me just turn off the grid, and then just use whatever texture you're using, set to FG, and then just paint over it like this. And now your shadow is, is basically gone, okay? Let's go ahead and copy, paste, put one more down. I see a little bit of a shadow right there. A little bit, there we go. Okay, so now you have your next one. So there's a lot of different options to choose from. And I personally, this is the same way that I put together map title decorations. And I think it might be a good idea to even do a tutorial on how to do that. And overall, I think Lily Rose uh, recommended in our stream uh, request channel. If you don't know, go check that out. Join our Discord. We have a new channel called Stream Request Channel. Now, if you're not already a member of Discord or on our Discord server, be sure that when you sign up, you go to the roles, hashtag roles channel and click that incarnator role. Now, once that you've clicked that role, you've assigned it to yourself, you can now check out all the different channels that are on the server and look for stream requests. It's going to be next to your feature and art request channels. And then just go ahead and follow the rules on how to on how to carry out your stream requests. But I do think that Lily Rose recommended labeling your maps. And I think she specifically, or they, I'm sorry, specifically requested uh, that uh, they wanted it for watercolor cities. But overall, I think it might be a good idea just to teach people how to label uh, their maps in general. Because sometimes people don't know, where do I put a map title? How should I label a village in comparison to a capital? How should I label uh, a region from a forest, from a city to a POI, whatever? So I think it might be a good idea maybe next month or maybe sneak it in this week to include a stream that will show people how to label their map and all the various things that you do to label, that you're going to label on your map. I also want to mention, and I forgot to mention this in announcements, or no, actually, I think I did mention it, but I want to mention to people who have maybe weren't here in the beginning when we started, we had a low, kind of a low view count when we started, not very many people. But I just want to mention again that we are doing a stream tomorrow because we just released the temple pack for the watercolor battle map style. The pack is, it's beautiful. And I love making temples. So we will be doing a stream tomorrow, kind of a surprise stream, 10 a.m. PST. Uh, and I've also included that in the Discord events, so make sure to go check that out. I really, really love making temples, so we'll come up with something really fun. Now, before we end it, is there any questions about heraldry? Uh, if you have historical questions, you're, you're welcome to ask me, but I may not <laughs> have the answers. Again, I'm an armchair scholar historian. I have no professional training of any kind, so I, I can't uh, be an authority on the history of heraldry, but hey, the history is interesting, what little I know. And of course, if anyone here has some knowledge or history of heraldry, feel free to ask. We are always welcome to try to learn new things. It's always fun to try to expand your knowledge of things. And that way, you're not ignorant about topics. It's always nice to expand your knowledge a little bit. A mind works best when it's open, like a parachute. Okay, well, let's go ahead and just see if people have any questions and if they don't then that's fine there's a lots and lots and lots of different fun things coming up by the way uh, i'm super excited i'm going to save this and i'll just go ahead and show you the calendar real quick so, so you can kind of check it out while i'm waiting for people to answer ask any questions 
that they might have. So many different options. Let's just save this and we'll go check out the calendar. Yeah, awesome. I absolutely loved making all these uh, heraldic achievements. They are extremely helpful and they look super cool on maps. I mean, they really just give um, your map a little bit more character um, and it might make your capitals a little bit more pop out more if there's a heraldic achievement over it. Um, so, or if you want to spruce up your map title, they all work really, really well. So I'm going to go back real quick. We'll go check out the calendar. I just want to show you all what we're going to be working on this month. And if you have any ideas, please, again, go to the stream request channel. So uh, this week, we only have one more, how to create temples on Thursday. Boom, excited about that. That's tomorrow. So I hope to see all your beautiful faces there tomorrow. Uh, next week, we've got how to create world maps with the fantasy regional style. That's going to be fun. Making world maps is exciting. And the fantasy regional style has so much detail in the art. So it's just going to be a really unique and interesting map to create with all this decorative art. And of course, uh, it might take several um, episodes to create this map. So because fantasy regional has so much art to choose from, uh, it might take a little while to make it. On the 11th of Wednesday, we're going to have to do how to create cosmology maps because I know for sure that some of you out there are world builders and you want to expand way beyond just one world. You maybe want to show all the different types of planets and the different types of worlds in your world building. So that might be for you. Uh, it's kind of an advanced, kind of an advanced uh, demo. Uh, not really, just depends, but cosmology maps are fun as fudge, okay? Then we'll continue creating our city blocks on Thursday the 12th. Boom, boom, excited about that more and more city blocks then we're going to do our map makeover part two we're going to be continuing amelia's veneria on the 18th we're going to burn some villages baby we're going pyro <sighs> yeah on the 18th wednesday so i'm excited about that one we're also going to do how to create political maps on the 23rd with the parchment map with the parchment world style i'm very excited about that political maps are great to show political conflict, strife between various nation states, regions, empires against neighboring empires or other uh, such state nation states. We're also going to be showing how to create rivers with the fantasy world style on the 25th. That's going to be fun. Lots of different ways to do your rivers. There's the path tool. There's painting them. There's using the mask tool. So many different options. So much fun. And then the last one of the month, uh, will be how to create mountain ranges with all styles. So uh, that mostly the world styles. So there aren't really uh, any ways to kind of create mountain ranges with watercolor cities or, or battle maps because a battle map is a scaled in map. It's generally not scaled out like a world map. So you don't really need to put mountains in your battle maps uh, because usually the scale, the mountain would be so large, you wouldn't even be able to see the majority of it. It's just so massive. But um, I can show you some methods on how to make uh, resemblance of mountain ranges with battle maps because sometimes you might want a ruin or something on top of a mountain peak or on a mountain side so that that way you can kind of show the grandeur of the scenery. Okay. Oh, RZ, we got a question here. Keeping an eye on general. Oh, I see it's not a question. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, so that's it for this month. Don't forget uh, to include, uh, to go ahead and make any requests you have with stream request channel because, hey, we listen. I don't want to come up with all these on my own. I actually want to hear what ideas you have and then implement them because that's what this is about, right? We want to have content that uh, users want as well as uh, content that's going to be useful in your world building. Now, it doesn't seem like there's any other questions, so I'll go ahead and call it good. I hope that the stream was helpful. Heraldry is tons of fun. Again, it can really add a lot to your maps, and it really helps with your world building in general. So thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, please stay safe and healthy and enjoy merry map making. Okay, so I will see hopefully you all tomorrow. Thanks so much, everybody. Please, again, stay safe and healthy, all right? Love y'all.